dun 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 Hello, welcome back to another Getting Projects Done with me, Chris. We're working on uh Alakazam the Dragon. And um, you know, we're gonna finish off some of the little glowiness on his sides and everything like that. I also want to correct up some of the uh, blue, the intensity of the blue on his head here. Uh, with last episode, we were just polishing off some other details. Um, you know, he's getting pretty darn close to done. And then, of course, we're going to work on his base. And for anybody out there who's tuning in for this, um, I am contemplating. I'm more contemplating i guess really is now what i should say of giving it away so yeah i think i am going to give this guy away to one lucky individual i say one because well it's kind of hard to split it up and you know send it to two different places but we could do the king solomon thing and be like a cut him in half we could cut him in half that that is an option that's an option. There's I'm joined. Where there is a will, there is a way. And uh, I'm joined today by Hale Boop and the Barfing Sheep. We're over in the Discord server. Uh, that's how we are able to talk like this during the stream. The marvels of modern technology. Hale, um, have you always known the internet since childhood? I was born in 94. Okay, so it was just starting up when you were uh, yeah. a wee lad. That's all right. Sorry, I got to move some crap around here. I got... Oh, my God. You know what? You know how he can... Contrary to th popular belief. What's that? I said contrary to popular belief. Uh, almost all millennials grew up at least at some point in their life without the internet. Sure, sure, yeah. Cause... So I'm just uh, moving some of this sh shit around in my office here. All right, so let's get to work. Enough goofing around. What about you, Barfing? Uh, you're, you sound like you're only a, a little bit younger than me. A little bit? No, I'm uh, born in 91. Oh, so you're oh. a good deal younger than me. Or, yeah. I'm just an old soul. I guess. Contrary, contrary to what uh, Ridley Scott said about his recently box office failure, uh, it's not the millennials' fault. It's the Zoomers' fault. The Zoomers' fault, yeah? Generation Z is the one after millennials. That's typically what everybody calls millennials, but they're actually Generation Z. Okay. Why? Why would he blame them? Because he blames the um, he blames the generation that grew up with the internet, like already having the internet. Oh, I got you. But he called he called them us millennials. No, that's us. <laughs> got you. Identity politics. Yeah, it's it's all pretty silly. Sophie, wow. Hey, everyone. Kim. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, so we're going to continue work on this guy. Um, yeah, the the whole identity thing and the generational thing, I mean, I kind of get it. The, regener the regenerational thing was originally made for, like, science-y reasons, like, to track. So they had, like, a, a point where they could look back, if they could just look back at something. <laughs> it wasn't really meant everyday use kind of. right that makes sense it was to mark milestones in like human history yeah well and and it and it does um but yeah i mean like however it gets used today i mean it, it feels a little bit uh unnecessary oh it's stretched far from what it was originally intended to be yeah definitely 100 percent. It, it's it is not what you know, I was just making a joke because Ridley Scott made a. It wasn't a bad movie, but. What was the movie? I don't, I don't know. I guess it was just okay, and he's 
explain the box office failure on the performance of Us. What was the movie he's talking about? The, the Last Duel, I think it was. Wasn't that... Yeah, the Last Duel. Wasn't that... Um, I thought that was a streaming movie. Was it in the theaters? It, was, it had theaters, yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh. Interesting. It was mostly streaming, but... Um, it was out in some theaters. Gotcha. It was kind of one of those, like, dual... Kind of things, but... <laughs> Kim. As, Do we have to talk about age? I feel old. <laughs> I don't want to say it was a bad movie, but really Scott's done better movies, and it's it covers a time period and a topic that not a lot of people will care about. Right. So. Yeah, I hear you. Of course, he could be just trying to, you know, cover his ass, right? Oh yeah, he is the same one who said um, superhero movies are bad. Well, to explain his uh, recent box office failure. I am not disagreeing. Not that they're Me bad, neither, but I don't think you should be blaming other genres of movies for your own movies' failure. Yes, very much. I mean, if he couldn't get them butts in the seat. Just by having his name attached to the project, then it's really not. Yeah. So, without spoiling, um, the last duel, the movie, the title of the movie is very straightforward. It's about it's about the last trial by combat in France. Sounds pretty After dry. The trial by combat was like an actual legal process. Right. Just for give people context, and you know. Not a lot of people are going to be interested in seeing a movie about that. No, it doesn't sound terribly interesting. I remember seeing the, like, the trailers for it in a while ago. I never ago. saw a trailer for it. I just happened, we just happened to be looking at movies at the movie theater. Because movie theater was doing, you know... I guess, I guess as close to a sale as a movie theater will do. Right. Uh, so we said, screw it, you know. It's a, it's a really nice movie theater. But, um, we said, screw it. So we went, and that was just, like, happened to be one of the few movies. I guess it was, like, one of those Hollywood lulls where, you know, like, at the movie theater, it's not really any super big movies. So we just went and watched it. Yeah. It was okay. Wasn't great, but it was no alien. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, like you know, he can't make that alien is, that every is, time. It's hard when you've made your your uh, the thing you're known for to make anything after that and have it be as successful. Yeah. But I think it was a dull thing where it's like it has his name, so everybody wants you know an alien movie for all. Well, and. Then, and uh, I mean, this like, having his name... Was chosen was just kind of, eh. Yeah, like, having his name associated with it, I mean, like, that's kind of the why you would go s even see this movie. Like, just even entertain the notion of going to watch this. Mm -hmm. Just because it's, it's a Ridley Scott film, because he does have an impressive yeah, catalog yeah, of films that he has done. Yeah. I don't know, this was not one of his better movies, I guess. Yeah, I mean... Interesting topic, but it's kind of one of those things where it's not really like a movie that will put people in seats. It doesn't seem like it, no. But, you know. Because everybody's like, ooh, night, day, but then it's like, it's about the last trial, but then nobody cares anymore. <laughs> right. Maybe if he went with, like, you know... King Arthur and the round Knights of the Round Table, he might have gotten seats, butts in the seats, but he went with what he went with, so whatever. And I just thought it was funny that instead of like going, Oh, 
I kind of made maybe a little bit of a stinker, whether it was like marketing the movie or just not picking a good, you know, theme era, whatever. He decided to go, no. It was, he did the, uh, what's the principal from The Simpsons? Skinner? He did a Skinner, where, uh, Principal Skinner, where it's like, could it be me who's out of touch? No, (laughs) it is the children. (laughs) Right, yeah. Yeah, I'm familiar with that one. kind of hilarious and how Simpsons so long ago have been proven right on so many things in our modern day culture I get a kick out of the ones that think that Matt Groening is a, a time traveler that's when you know you're going into some really weird places on the internet I think it's funny that all the memes that like the Simpsons predicts the future, even though they did just so many out there things that, you know, some of it was a bound to stick. Yeah. Oh yeah. 100%. It's the spaghetti on the wall thing, right? Yeah. Well, same thing with, uh, Mr. Domitz. Everybody's like, oh, he's predicted the end of the world and all this, but it's like, he said a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And a lot of those things didn't happen. So. But I just think it's funny when the Simpsons lines up with reality. It's hilarious. Yeah, definitely. Disco afternoon, afternoon. Sophie, I like the paint case you showed on your video. Be perfect for storage just to pop a sticker on the case like a Citadel red orange and then put all the base layer, uh, base layer wash contrast glaze of that color and also one that says Tamaya red orange red or Vel red or Vallejo red orange and all you have to do is eight pick up the colors you need and then pop them in your desk paint rack while you do your project yeah it's kind of an interesting idea i mean like like if you have limited space and you know you have to set up and tear down every time you know you want to get some hobbying in having all your paints you know kind of categorized and organized um you know in cases and stuff like that so you can just kind of you know slide them away and put them away when needed uh, I don't think that's a horrible idea. Um, you know, having like each case dedicated to a particular color, I think that's actually kind of interesting. I mean, you'd have to have a pretty big collection of paints to warrant having like, you know, eight cases, you know, with red, blue, black, white, grays, you know, stuff like that. But I like it, it's a good idea. I'm not about to do it, but. <laughs> I think I want some more opaque color here. Opaque. Present. You were present. Yeah, I was just wolfing down an MRE. <laughs> it's been a long day. Like a legit MRE? Yeah. Couldn't be arsed with making food, and I didn't have time because I was just came home. I hear so you. Me. Well, because like myself personally, I find that throughout the day, I'll end up, you know missing a meal and i'm like damn if i had to just you know freaking grab something really fast and you know chomped it down and carried on with my day kind of thing you know mre is not a, a horrible idea as far as you know staying productive through the day it's not a horrible idea until uh until you, know, you, till you eat it nature's business <laughs> oh well we have different different kinds over here Oh, okay. It's not not American MRAs or Norwegian MRAs. They're amazing. I mean, American MRAs aren't bad, but they're designed to stay in a warehouse for a very long time. And um, they're also designed to um, make you not need to go to the bathroom as much. So when you do go to the bathroom, 
It is oh, Lordy. <laughs> yeah, I've tried the uh, beef fried beans thing. Probably the closest thing a man will ever get to experience childbirth is uh, doing nature's call after, you know, a couple of weeks of eating at Marty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're thinking to yourself, why haven't I shit today? Ah, uh, good grief. Like back at base, I shit like a monkey, but here, no. <laughs> Out in the wilds. <laughs> Kim, yeah, it's a nice case. I did a see a few people had commented on the video that they found it useful. Yeah, that wasn't the intention of the video, uh, was to, like, you know, showcase the case, but it was more or less to answer Sophie's uh, comment about, you know, organizing colors, and kind of got me thinking about, you know, Does everybody kind of organize their colors? Is organizing the colors a sign of like some sort of OCD or, you know, because I'm sure, I'm sure so many people in this hobby, you know, have OCD kind of thing, right? So. The closest I get to organizing is the colors I use most are towards the front. Oh, really? The colors I use least are towards the front. About as close as I get to organizing. Then again, I'm not with you or anything like that. Just whatever. Uh, Kim, I think I can do that. Make one case for each tone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if, again, like if, if you have to tear down and set up your paint setup um, every time you hobby, then yeah, organizing your cases and such, that makes sense. Me personally, I mean like, I'm spoilt for space in my office, somewhat, and it does allow me to, you know, just simply have all my crap in front of me. Mind you though, my office does look pretty chaotic. You know? I probably should clean up my hobby area. Should start organizing stuff around the house. <laughs> yeah. And it's not necessarily because I want to, but I've been working on myself <laughs> the last like couple of months. Working on yourself. Yes. So taking some me time and such. No, trying to be the ideal catch. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Well, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so it's like... you go. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Uh, when you say you are uh, spoiled for space, I'm just picturing you going to like a servant. Now, nah, fetch me the pallet witch flesh. It is over there. Pointing fucking far off. <laughs> I mean, you, you could call one of the kids in and just go get that. Uh, <laughs> I oh, could. Spring, that's, fetch that's me that's the witch flesh. Four, right? That's what the wife sold me on. <laughs> they do things around the house. They're little minions. You get a little minion for you know. Well, I was gonna say eighteen years. It's more like what, thirteen? Because yeah. you have to, you know, you have to grow the minion first. Yeah, it's it's kind of like sea monkeys. You got to take care of them. Cultivate the minion. Yeah. And you have to grow the minion first, and then hope the minion doesn't get a rebellious phase for two to three years. Oh, that's unavoidable. I mean, But yeah, I was I was I was conned into this whole thing. <laughs> Fuck it, we go silent. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is that you have all anchor babies. <laughs> anchor babies? Anchor babies. Like many kids from different mums? No, um, well, once in the past, I had a girlfriend whom uh, it wasn't going well, so things were looking, they were looking bad, we were looking like a, a breakup was going to happen, and she uh, tried to have a baby. A baby? Yeah. So oh, I see. To, without telling me, uh, and if we had a baby... We can't leave now. We have a child. Anchor. I got you. An anchor baby. 
Sorry. I, I thought you were going for the more traditional definition of an angrier baby. But never mind. Yeah, I thought it was kind of like a, you know, a port kind of thing. Oh. Yeah, like an anchor, like oh. you know, like a sailor. You know, they go port to port and knock up no. all sorts of people, okay, right? So at least in the U.S., the traditional definition of an angrier baby, and this doesn't necessarily justify the U.S., um, is a non-citizen having a child in the country, so that child has the citizenship. Oh, okay. Oh. Only in America there. Well, maybe I've been using the term wrong the entire time, but you know, it fits. Uh, the way you describe it, that's, that sounds like a very familiar scenario. I don't know how often that occurs, but, I mean, considering that you are giving us first-hand information. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say twice in a lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> twice. Jeez Louise. That's, uh, yeah. But, no, it wasn't, it wasn't an anchor baby thing. Um. It was, it was. It was a good idea. And it ended up being in. A... Yeah, well, we were, like we were together for a while beforehand, and then it was like, yeah, let's start a family. And then of course, my family was like, yeah, you should start having kids because I was, at the time, you know, we had a house and you know, having a regular type life. What's that? It sounds like my grandmother. Yeah, and. Talk to her. You have kid? You have baby yet? Yeah. <laughs> well, because I mean, like you know. Family always wants to see more kids, right? And everybody, you know, everybody gets all excited about kids. And, you know, kids are a good thing. Like, having a baby, honestly, I mean, it's never a bad thing. Babies are never bad. Unless they're Hitler. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even even the baby Hitler he scenario. He bad until he had some surgeries. <laughs> yeah, like, even the baby Hitler thing. I mean, like, that's... You're not going to go back in time and kill baby Hitler. I mean, like, the baby is just a baby, right? Yeah, he wasn't born evil. It was, you know... Yeah, I mean... <laughs> his upbringing. Yeah, like, it's really a lack of imagination to just assume, well, you can just smoke baby Hitler and, you know, you prevent the Second World War. When the instant that cha oh, no. that made that guy make those choices, you can go back to that moment and, you know, choose, you know, the opposite of what he historically chose as opposed to killing him as a child right there are not many people who are inherently born evil it's mostly uh well oftentimes when we're looking at these kind of things it is through the lens of history yeah. and you know hindsight is 2020 and so saying that yeah yeah we, if we'd have killed hitler when he was a child you know it would have you know, saved us a lot of heartache. That's not entirely true, because first of all, you're advocating killing an innocent child, and that's never a good thing. The cause... are we doing the uh, Doctor Strange like this is the best timeline thing? Like something worse could have totally happened. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it totally can always happen. <laughs> then, that's why I never say let's go back in time and you guys start fucking with shit. Because it's like, what if something worse? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It's what, it, once you start pulling at one thread, the whole thing comes apart, right? Uh, Sophie, probably my shoes have to be organized. T-shirts, jackets, well, all my clothes, my D, DVFs, just like it tidy. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally get it. And I'm just kind of the same way. I mean, like, if I could move this camera around my office, a lot of you neat freaks probably would lose your minds, but... It does kill me every day sitting in here and going, oh, fuck, I gotta take care of this. Oh, shit, I gotta... I just realized that my shelf with all my shit on it looks like it's tilting. Uh -oh. Yeah. I just noticed that. There's some big stuff on there. Well, the thing is, like, I, I have some, like, board games on the bottom shelf to give it weight, but then... It's just a bunch of plastic models in between, but then I have something heavy on top of it, and I think that's causing it to lean. You might want to move the heavy objects out. Yeah. Well, it's it's my uh, piece of camera gear. It sits up there. Yeah, no, you definitely want to move that thing. I thought you were talking about the shelf that holds all your Eldar stuff. Oh, no. No, no. No, my all my all, uh, army is um, in my other studio room. Um, oh, you moved it? Yeah, all my Eldar stuff? Yeah, it's all in my... Um, Where's my 
where you have the way of the brush that I already show a different office? No, it's the same office, but my other room is where I film. So, like, for example, the video I just filmed uh, talking about the paints and organizing, that is in the other space. I use that space for that kind of stuff. Oh, well, I thought the I thought your, like, phantom titan was always in the background during your way to brush stuff. No, actually, no. Did he move recently, or? Nope. Some puppy's help. Nope, uh... I, w I would have to say, uh, Hale. Maybe that I'm just you... enough of an old head that I remember the older streams where he was in the background. Yes. And I just never bothered looking in the background ever again. <laughs> it's good to know people are paying attention to the visual visuals. Well, I know you grab your Grogu or your freaking Nurgling plushie off that shelf, but I figured they were just sitting next to the Phantom Titan. No. I'm not doing. Oh, I did some hobbiting today, but not miniature hobbying or anything. Did you forge a shoe? No. Just... Forge a shoe? <clears throat> I had a yeah. big shipment on my front door, and I opened it up, and I got everything ready. Brodeo season. Oh. Did you say Brodeo? Yeah, I'm not in the rodeo, but I go to it. Uh, Kim. But I have space too. I don't have to paint some cases either. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you got the space, you know, it's not a big issue. But. I know there's many out there who, yeah, they have to, you know, pack up and put their stuff away and, you know. So you saying you have the final final frontier? Um, I don't follow. Joe, Joe, you said you have space. Oh. <laughs> final frontier. Yeah, I got it now. I, I caught up. I caught up. No, no, you got me. It was good. My mouth was open. <laughs> I just keep all my paint pots in a drawer, <clears throat> but the drawer itself is organized. Into colors and shit. And the thickness of paint. You organize by thickness. Or, uh, uh, pigment really? That's interesting. I honestly, I don't think I've ever heard of that, of organizing by thickness. Well, I'm a fucking weirdo, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going there, but <laughs> since you did. Yeah, it's out there now. That's fucking bizarre. <laughs> what? Organizing your paints by thickness. Yeah, but uh, by color and uh, pigment density. That's very interesting. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. no. I'm saying, I thought you were organizing your paint by thigh swish. Thigh swish. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Like a thick. Thigh swish. Squish. Oh, squish. The thick yeah. joke. Squish. Yeah, the ones with the five C's are the front. Sophie, big problem with the time travel is that although you change the past, you're destroying the future as the as the past becomes the present and someone worse who is born from someone who died in World War II, we, with the timeless change, could end up destroying the world. It's the movie where you see into the future Martin Sheen and Chris Walker. Whoa. <laughs> I, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. <laughs> Create your own new separate timeline. Yeah, well, and, and again, like, yeah, the whole idea... Of time travel, I mean, like, as 
far as we understand it, you know, it's it's not it's not possible. And other than like we can go forward in time, but we can't go backwards in time, as we currently understand things. Yeah, we're time travelers. Yeah. A- and in TV shows and such, anybody who's well versed in Star Trek, you know, the the that has been, you know, dealt with many many times. Uh, in Star Trek, you know, playing with time and everything. There's, there's movies with time travel address the subject, like, you know, if you go back in time, you're not supposed to, you know, mess with anything. Yeah, you, well, and that's usually the, the go-to explanation, the default, right? Um, if something you mess with could affect the future, etc. Et well, it all depends on what version of our interpretation of time we're talking about because if time in this universe um works the way we you know that we can be flexible with it and move backwards or is it the time being a dimension and if we move back we're actually crossing a dimension and so anything we do in that timeline does not affect the other timelines because we've crossed into another dimension and changed things there's, there's all sorts of dumb things about time. Again, yeah, I mean, like, it's an interesting um, subject, but I mean, ultimately, it's, you know, it's pointless. Because, for the most part, all these theories, um, you know, as far as the possibility of going backwards in time, it is, only, the only way it works as far as how we understand it, is we're crossing into another dimension. Like, we're not really making changes in our universe. We're changing things in another. To get really nerdy about things. Chris becomes a time traveler, believes he's in another dimension, (laughs) starts screwing with stuff. Oh, like time, tra- time traveling scientist back up, back you know in his in the, in his time, realizes he forgot to carry a zero. Chris is actually messing messing with the time in its own dimension. <laughs> yeah, well, if I if that was the case, that could very well happen to me because you know I'm famous for forgetting one tiny little fucking detail. I'd forget to carry the zero or carry the one, and yeah, next thing you know. <laughs> Lobsters Chris are Chris walking on the, land. The, the the worst monkey back in time <laughs> <laughs> realizes he forgot to carry a zero. Goes, oh, oh god, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I should never be put in charge of these kinds of things. <laughs> uh, yeah, who put you in charge of this? <laughs> I don't know. I definitely, I, I recuse myself from this shit. There was a period of time where me and Eldari were posting the uh, Black Hand from the um, Assassin's Guild in Elder Scrolls. I forget. The Brotherhood. The Dark Brotherhood. The Black Hand note that gives, you know, people that say we know. And we were tagging Chris with these notes from, you know, like Skyrim. <laughs> because there, for a while, patrons had admin power. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Dickheads. <laughs> yeah, I thought the fucking server got hacked. <laughs> so me and Eldari were like posting like Dark Brotherhood notes from like Skyrim screenshots. <laughs> yeah, ha 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 ha! Very funny, motherfucker. <laughs> Look at me. I am the captain now. Chris, <laughs> Chris from his own server. Look at me. I'm the captain. Now. I'm the captain now. I'm pretty sure. I think it was. I think it was after that. Um, at some point, anyway, I um, changed it to uh, uh, authentication with through the phone, mm-hmm. so that shenanigans could not occur.
Sophie, the multiverse theory. Yeah. Um, the multiverse theory uh, is, it kind of, it makes more sense that we were, uh, we live within a multiverse. But not, I don't think it's, I don't think it's really like how, you know, like, for example, in the movies, how they would describe it, like, basically, you, you could go from one world to another, because I don't think there's definable boundaries between them. And just, like, simply going, well, I'm in one universe now, and then I'm going to make another universe and go into that, you know what I mean? Because basically, our choices kind of compound that and each choice we divert and create alternates right that's kind of it you know what i mean like it's just it's kind of crazy uh one of the ones that i had uh, found very interesting was that um because you know how they're always looking for the theory of you know everything and the way that they were getting to a working theory was that they removed time from their equations and everything worked for the most part and so you know it, it made everybody kind of question time and then of course you get into um you know the whole multiverse thing and basically um because they're, they're trying to equate for gravity but in a multiverse if gravity was a unifying force across all these worlds these universes then it makes sense because gravity is so strong and yet so weak and if it's spread out across all these universes as one element, but every, you know, like slices of bread kind of thing, then it, the gravity situation works for that as well. So, you know, that's why these crazy ass theories pick up steam. Oh, by the way, some people might find this interesting. Some might not. Um, you know, those uh, like Warhammer magazines over in the UK and Europe where they give you the little minis and by the end of like, the series of magazines you will have an army to play with mm -hmm. they're doing that in the u.s now oh that's kind of cool and i am thinking about it because it is for for a month subscription because it's technically a new magazine every week because um at least in the uk they treat it almost like comics where like you know a new comic comes out every week yeah New magazine every week, so one month is fifty dollars. You get the magazine, the models, um, if there's hobby tools, hobby tools, etc. Yeah. I might do it. Just because it sounds fun. Yeah. I might do it with a friend because you get, you know. Should always do it with a friend. You get Imperial and Necron, so I might be like, I might hit up a friend who's interested in forty k because fifty dollars. Uh, for each um, month, and you get four issues a month, and it's running for two months. That's like a hundred bucks, and you'll have like a, a fairly sizable army. Yeah. No, it sounds really cool. But then it's half of a month. Well, no, it's more than the two months. But do you, Do you have a link as to um the service? Yeah, I'll get it for you. Yeah, just post it in the Discord. Por favor. Painting Harlequin. Harlequin? 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 Anyway, what gold tone is this? Liberator? Um, my intention initially when I put this model together, I put the whole thing together and I was going to paint it all as one, which was a huge mistake. So don't do as Chris. Uh, I was going to spray it Retributor Gold and then begin all this work. And that I, I thought I had a can of it. Turns out I don't. So I had to, you know, rely to other things. So basically, I primed this in a gloss black and then used um, Tamaya's uh, gold? Gold leaf? I think it's gold leaf. And the other one's gold, titanium gold, I think. There's two golds in, in Tamaya's acrylic line. Anyway, that's what the base is. And it wasn't quite as rich feeling as the Retributor Spray. And which is why, man, I, I shaded this with many different colors. I even used some golden uh, transparency uh, 
for like these shadows like right in here into the groin where you get that really warm value that's actually um what the fuck color is that that's was it the yellow i think it was this one i used it's transparent yellow iron oxide and it's got this really warm brown orangey color to it it's a really nice color or was it or it might have been transparent brown iron oxide it was one of these two colors that i used and i basically sprayed up at the model a majority of the figure was done airbrush uh even creating these gradients in the membranes of the wing stuff like that that was all done by airbrush you know you know, getting some of these brighter points on the muscle groups and you know sp spraying downwards get the high points and then hit it with a shade wash the final wash that i applied to get like all this nice deep dark color in the recesses of the scales and such that's the um necron shade wash color what the fuck is that one called uh yeah cryptek armor shade gloss yeah that's what i used I was trying to work fairly quickly to try and get this thing done, but uh, pretty much failed at it. So now I can spend a little bit more time on it, enjoy it, and do something that looks really pretty. Or mostly pretty. Sort of pretty. I am mostly okay with the crack in his neck. His scar, apparently why he's glowing blue energy in his side of his head i have no idea because it's cool because it looks freaking cool why not right yeah i do want to push a bit deeper color over here so that we will do <coughs> excuse me kim it's only been possible in the UK and Germany to get those magazines. They're doing Spain next. I was hoping to, it would be possible to get in Scandinavian countries. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually waiting for that. And that's rare. For me to anticipate this. Oh, my God. oh model, I buy. Okay. <laughs> I'm simple man. Interesting though. Plain weird. We'll go with simple. <laughs> Not simple like simple jack simple. I'm just talking, you know, simple. No, no. Yeah, not terribly complicated. I put the building in there, general. Put a bit of tissue <laughs> in my tree. <laughs> just like Uh, Sophie, those magazines are okay. You can pick and choose what you want from the armies and scenery without having to, uh, but the whole run, if the magazine, as long as a news agent keeps up with the issues for stock. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see how that could be a problem. Because you could be well invested into it and, you know, be six months, seven months into it, and then, you know, the company up and dies and... You know, you're stuck in incomplete. Um, at least in the US it looks like it's just doing it through their website. They have to subscribe and get the box with the four magazines. I don't know if it's gonna be available in like a Warhammer store or anything. Right. Alright. Let's have a little bit of fun. I'm going to use titanium white. I'm going to make a little wash out of this. Oh no, you'll be able to buy in the issue one in stores January 25th, 2022. Issue two, the 9th, February. Oh no, it looks like you will be able to buy it in stores. I Actually, I don't know if... 
access to the US version. I don't know what stores they're gonna be in though. <laughs> I mean I guess GW stores, I wanna guess. The great prospect to get rid of. A naked eye. <laughs> what? You <laughs> want if you get the premium subscription off the website you get with issue 15 they give you a um they it's just the old start collecting kits they give you an old start collecting kit chaos that's the old start collecting kit minus the uh the big thing gotcha so you get chaos at issue 15 issue 33 you get tyrion issue 51 you get tau and then issue 69 you get what Thanks. Boop, uh, painting Harlequin wants to know: Do you have Instagram? Do I? Do you? Yes, I haven't posted anything on there recently, but yes. I haven't posted anything there in a year, and it's been lazy. <laughs> Remember the last time I posted on mine? Ages ago. Eons, I say. Ages ago? Ages ago. Ages is an easier way to share shit. mildly bad because they're I have a decent amount of followers on Instagram and I never post anything it's like these people took time to hit that that little follow button and I never fucking post anything <laughs> I'm gonna go follow you just to throw you under <laughs> just to make them feel guilty <laughs> I, <already laughs> <did it. laughs> I guess I, guess I can post when I'm done this soul drinker I guess I can post it <laughs> Yeah, this orc is probably the proudest thing I've ever painted recently. I don't know why I'm showing this to you. I don't know, just copy. Copy me. I think I found it. It's not hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> it is not hard to find. The boop? Huh? Well, I mean... Sometimes it can be hard to find the boot, but you know, you just gotta get into it. And... Well, it's the same. Oh no, it's not the same picture. It's the same picture as my Twitch, not my uh, Discord. Can you keep a straight face? You don't have the energy to make stupid jokes. <laughs> Painting Harley King. If you are in. Uh, Way of the Brush Discord server. I am going to post it. Monkey Playground chat. So, how could one make at home uh, like candy colors? Candy, candy colors. Yeah, like the candy reds and the candy blues. 
No. You mean without buying a candy paint? Yes. Okay, that's called. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> don't. Just don't. Uh, no. So I use uh, DuckDuckGo, uh -huh. and the safe search was off. So I googled Candy Red. <laughs> it's not a color. It's not uh, a paint. Well, how, how most people do it, you know, because we'll probably give a better answer, is um, undercoat the metallic and then get a, like, like a clear color, like a cameo clear red, and then just paint over it. And then Chris will probably give a better answer. For doing a candy color? Yeah. Um, like converting a paint into a candy color? Yeah, or make that effect. Well, make, making the effect, I mean, you could do it by, it's kind of like in a similar fashion in which you can make something look shiny by employing, you know, like non-metallic metal type of techniques. Oh, okay. You know, um, but if you want the model to actually be metal, like actual metallics, but have clear color on top of it, um, not to my knowledge, does anything exist that will change a paint into a clear color? There was one product um, by MIG Ammo, and um, it was it, it claimed that it would turn a color transparent, but they're actually talking more about translucency and not transparency. And there is a distinction, obviously. And, yeah, so when people typically are referring to candy colors, yeah, they're talking about that clear color on top of a metallic. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, and so to make it, there is not an option that I know of. Not to say that there isn't, it's just I don't know of one um, that could turn, say, for example, Mephiston Red into uh, essentially, you know, Flesh Terror's Red. That, that has to be done at the manufacturing phase. You have to use the pigments for it. Um, okay. Yeah. You're better off finding the, the color. Could I? Could you? Uh, I could just experiment with it, but uh, let's say I lay down a, uh, like a bright metallic, and then a thinned out wash of uh, contrast over it, and then gloss. Um, yeah, you could, it, the, because the contrast finish is kind of matte, like for example, the, this, um, this flesh tear is red, it'll, it'll push that metallic and make it more matte. Like you can barely see, I mean, on camera, it doesn't really look like there's a metallic finish to this, but to the eye, you can see that there is a, a metallic base to this and there's light playing through this. Um, but as far as... Yeah, like it. It had it. Ha, it's. I mean, I don't know of any other products out there that can convert something into it. I mean, you could always paint the surface to look like that, like you know, to how we do for non-metallic metals. You can always go for that kind of approach. Nothing wrong with that, but it does require more work, which is why I prefer to simply just use metallics to achieve these kind of looks. It's just more, more efficient in my, in my experience to just use a product that achieves that desired uh, end result, right? But yeah, using like um, the contrast paint on top of metallics, it'll work, but it it'll it'll finish a slightly matte, and if your goal is to get that candy finish. That is the domain of glossy paints. See, a lot of people use the uh, clear Tamiya paint. Yeah, clear Tamiya, that's that's one of the better examples. Tamiya, um, Minotaur ghost tints, those are perfectly clear. Although there is... Um, what else? According to uh, Coma, um Green Stuff World is trying to make candy inks. Yeah. It's nothing. It's not really difficult to make um, 
with uh, like a candy colors. Again, it's like a super new like miniature kind of brand. So that's really good. Yeah. Uh, Vallejo Premium. Premium. They have candy colors. Yeah. Now, I have like Vallejo uh, transparencies. And again, they're not transparencies. They're translucent. They aren't clear. Which, you know, bit of a bummer. I'm just trying to find, at least trying to find uh, cheaper methods as to just, you know, straight up buying paint. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah. Do you have an airbrush? I do. You do? I recommend Tamaya. Um... Tamaya, it's the the paints are inexpensive for how much you get. I, I highly recommend you get the thinner for the paint. Um, I mean, you can cut Tamaya with um, you know iso alcohol, but I'd recommend the thinner because it's it would be at the optimal dilution of alcohol, yeah. right? It's so. the exact same medium, isn't it? Yeah. Now, on the subject of mediums, I mean, like, using Lamia Medium, I've used Lamia Medium with, like, golden paints. And it works fine. Water-based acrylics are water-based acrylics. But when you start getting into the realm of solvent paints, that's when it starts to, uh, things get a little different. Just a little bit. Well, I do still have the glazes. Glazes should do it. Because I'm pretty sure they finish kind of glossy. Yeah, they glossy. Fuck no, I got all of them. Because I, I was thinking uh, I'm getting the the Necromunda ladies. The Eschers? I have the green ones, and that's what I use for their chemical weapons. Could also try the clear, the uh, Tamiya clears. Yeah, I would recommend the Tamiya clears. The blend is my scalp. If your if the concern is um, cost, then yes, I'd recommend to make it clear. Uh, I don't know how easy it is to get Minotaur colors in Norway. I'd imagine it's not terribly difficult, but it's probably nobody in your area that carries it normally. I like Minotaur; they go really nice and um, clear on top of surfaces. They work really well through the airbrush, but you can also brush them as well. The same with the Tamaya. Tamaya, you can brush it or airbrush it. But if your goal is to get a nice, smooth, you know, candy effect on the surface, airbrush is the better way to go. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think what else the other transparencies I have. Oh, golden golden paints. Those are all transparencies. Yeah, I found, found those. Those are uh, very expensive. Golden? Yeah, they are pricey. But you get quite a bit. I mean... Yeah. These uh, high flow lines, they are 30 milliliters. And it's a, uh, about, I think, 10 bucks Canadian, I think I pay per. So, as opposed to like 10 bucks for one of these. And I get how much? 18 milliliters? 16. 18. 18 milliliters. So, just over half the volume for contrast. And you probably pay the same, if not more. <clears throat> uh, Kim, buy the clear Tamaya ones and the candy inks from Green Stuff World. Yeah, Green Stuff. I've not tried the uh, Green Stuff World paints, so I couldn't speak to that. Um, Kim's super glossy transparent colors with nice colors. Tamaya clear, aka interactive real color clear. All the Liquitex inks work for candy effects too. Um, with the... Liquitex inks? I don't know. Do they have transparencies? Because I've used in like a lot of these projects and stuff like that. Um, I use this on the Necrons and it's not clear. It's tra it's very translucent, but it's not clear. Um, it's not like the shade washes or even the contrast paints. Contrast paints for the most part, are clear. So, yeah. Uh, 
doesn't seem like these guys carry uh, the Tam Tamiya, Tamaya Denim. Oh no? no it's, you might have to look elsewhere for it. But I recommend using the the, the proper proper thinner. Uh, make sure you get the uh, X20A thinner. There's an X20 and an X20A. Get the A. That's for acrylics. X20A? Yeah, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be sure to get that, eh? Oh, beauty. Oh, oh, oh. I found an uh, X21 and an X22. X21 might be a color. Or is it a yeah, thinner? black base. Yeah. Uh, X22 is clear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a clear, which is basically like a gloss. It's just clear yeah. gloss. Okay, and I also have a semi-gloss there. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Now, if it has an F in the name, that is for their enamel series. An F? I think it's an F. That's for their yeah. enamel. Yeah, it's not the F stripe now. Yeah, that's... This is this is where I should get my uh, try out the uh, metallic. Yeah, the the Tamiya metallics uh, are pretty good. I used them in the sister battle videos I had done a little while ago. Uh, the action figure. I used them on that figure, and they they're pretty good. It's not like like even the Tamiya Chrome. It's really good. I, that, if if I'm gonna recommend a metallic. I'd recommend that to Maya Chrome because it is really, really shiny. Is it Chrome? No, not like proper Chrome paint, but it's pretty darn good. But is it the best? No. The best Chrome is Molotow. If we're talking the best. I imagine for you, it's probably pretty easy to get your hands on Molotow. Because it's a European, I'm pretty sure it's German. German company. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, the other one, Chrome, that I like is the uh, Spastics. That's an airbrush paint line. It's more for like RC cars, but it's enamel based. It's good stuff, though. Okay. It says Game Zone, and that's the exact site I'm on. Well, Chris, you need you don't have to use miniature paint. <laughs> nope. You just use house paints. You can use fucking house paints if you want, yeah. Exactly. Like oil, oil paints that you use for uh, windows and shit. Yep. 110% correct. Could use latex paints if you wanted to. Um... I don't know what kind of control you get. I've never used a latex paint on a miniature. Yeah. I'm gonna start using finger paint. Or I'm not gonna use a paintbrush. <laughs> yeah, you can you can totally finger paint. Totally. Or I mean, I know you. I know you're making a joke, but you totally can. I mean, yes, you can. <laughs> um, the cheap dollar store um, acrylic paint. Apple. A yeah, Apple Barrel or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah. Uh, I know somebody who paints with that, and they do great work. I know a few. Yeah. Um, I can paint with them. Uh, one paints really good with them, but, you know. Yeah, it's... You also have to put them up with them too, but, so. It's never the paint. It's never the paint. That's probably one of the biggest things about miniature painting is that you know, everybody kind of has in their head that if I have this paint, I'll be able to paint really well. If I get this brush, I'll be able to paint really well. And that's completely untrue. Nothing is going to make you a better painter other than time. I'm going to jump over to some evil sun scarlet. How's your G.I. Joe doing? Well, what, me? Well, you're the only asshole in here doing G.I. Joe fucking Imperial Guard. Come on. Uh, I'm on break. Yeah? I mean, I have what I have right now, but slowly getting painted, but... Okay. 
I haven't bought enough to, you know, get it to that patrol, um, battle size yet. That's Do strictly because of, you know, stocking. Wh why not, I, I don't want to derail your project, but what if, to keep yourself motivated, what if you made it into a kill team? I am not a fan of the new kill team rule. I didn't say play it. Oh, just make it into a kill team? Yeah. Well, I mean, I could with what I have right now, yeah. Yeah. But if you're not a fan of Kill Team, well, I mean, you can always play the previous edition of Kill Team. You don't have to play the current edition. Oh, no, no, no I'm just not a fan of Kill Team in general. Oh, no? Oh. No. Why? I want to play a skirmish game. I have other skirmish games I like more. Kind of thing. Gotcha. But it's not, like, financial or not wanting to work on it. I think I've said this before, is I wanted this... Scion Joe project to solely be done at my local store via stock that they have and the problem is is that a lot of people want to play guards <laughs> right for some reason in the new edition of Warhammer a lot of people decided they wanted to play guards so uh, it's hard getting the Scions at the local stock shop right now the hilarious thing is going to be when when and if Eldar drop, everybody going to jump over to Eldar. I'm going to be super salty. If, if I'm salty right now because I can't go to the store and just get Scions like I used to like two, three years ago, I'm going to be super salty if I can't go to the freaking store and get a pack of guards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not as big of an Eldar player as you are, Chris, but Eldar is one of the big factions I have in my rotation. And if I can't get my Eldar moves like I can right now, like, I walked in, and I was, you know, I wanted for, because I have Ulthwe. Most people who have been here a while know I have Ulthwe. Um, and I'm working on a Lace Hawk. So I went in and bought, like, half my Lace Hawk army right then and there. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm going to be salty if I go back to get the other half. <laughs> and people are like, I play Eldar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing, right? I mean, like. If the if the rumors are to be believed, then they're coming. It's a double edged sword because you want your faction to be big. You want a lot of people to play your faction, so your faction gets more support more often. True. But yep. you also don't want that because you want to be able to go to the store and there be stock. <laughs> well, it's not so much that. It's just like you know playing games. I don't want you know I don't want to show up to anything any events and then everybody's playing fucking Eldar and it's like well, what the fuck. There there is a bit of selfishness to it. Yeah. Then I just have to play Harlequins and paint diamonds. There you go. I mean, I'm already painting diamonds on my um, Oktoberfest uh, Caradon Overlord. So, I have some practice to get more diamonds in on Harlequins. <laughs> and I think I'll be safe, you know, being the only Harlequin player. At, there's no Harlequin player at the store. And that is a niche that needs to be filled <laughs> at my local shop. There's really? no Harlequin players. I need to fill that niche. Harlequins are tough. I don't understand why there wouldn't be any Harlequin players. It's, um, my store, I'm going to make a statement. My store is a very much a big guns never tire kind of store. Mm. So a lot of power gamers. If not have big guns, nobody plays it. Right. That's kind of lame. I usually don't say this kind of thing, but it sounds like your community is lame. Even though my store limits a thousand points to maybe fifteen hundred points on my yeah. weekends because they have the smaller four by four tables now, so they can fit more in there. Since you know ninth edition um, and third edition uh, AOS have moved to the alternating table sizes depending on how many points you play. He just cut all of his tables in half, basically. So now instead of three um, four by sixes, he has a uh, use the EXE that stuff for it. Yeah. They're four by fours, not two by twos. <laughs> so I'm sitting here. He he has a uh, four tables now. 
the um he turned one of them into a dummy table. I was trying to count in my head. I so was really happy when we, we gained another table <laughs> and played space and then a demo table so he doesn't have to use the gaming table to play demo table. So we came out, I guess, technically double the tables because you would have to reserve a table for demo. So at 1,000 to 1,500 points, it's a lot harder for people to play Big Guns Never Tire, but they find ways to cram, you know, the big shit into the list. <laughs> it means they're not playing objective, but... Uh, Sophie Wow. Oh, I can vouch for the fact that expensive brushes and top-notch Paints don't make you a better painter. No, of course not. Uh, I think, I, think I, I live by the statement, it just might make your life a little bit easier. Yep. Oh, if, uh, if you were, if you had the skill set for it, it just makes your life a little bit easier. Yeah. I mean, like, it's not to say that they're not going to have a difference, but, you know, if you're new to this hobby, you really don't know the nuances between paint lines, between, you know, water-based and you know like all the different water-based acrylic paints and you know thinning your paints i mean those are usually your biggest hurdles yeah little tiny paints yeah it's so i wanted to google where the statement big guns never tire came from and um apparently it's not from 40k it's from something else but apparently 40k has really uh Co-opted, like actually having rules and stuff called big guns never tire. <laughs> yeah, it's an imperial guard thing. <laughs> I play, I play guard, but I don't know the names of my rules. I just go, I know I have this rule, and I show them in the four corners of the rule. <laughs> 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 I have this rule. I'm like a little kid. I have this rule. It says I can do this. I don't know what it's called, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Painting Harlequin, I'm working on a Death Guard kill team, but working with high quality martial makes it easier to achieve good results. I use good brushes as well as cheap ones for dry brushing or rough painting, for example. Sure. And I mean, you know, if you've been in this hobby at least a year or two, I mean, yeah, you're, you're well on your way to, you know, figuring out for yourself what paints you like, how they move, you know, how they thin, how they mix, you know, blend, what have you. All these things, you know, primers, brushes, you know. You're well into your way. And it seems nowadays that people progress really rapidly um, in this hobby as far as, you know, just starting to slap paint down to getting into more nuanced blends and, you know, things of that nature. Maybe you have the internets. Yeah, well, and there's a shit ton of tutorials out there, right? And so, yeah. Kim, if good paints and good brushes would make you a better painter, I would be the best painter in the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. I mean, we'd all would. If, if it was that easy, right? If, you know, if game like, for example, if Games Workshop paints were the best paints, their brushes were the best brushes, then anybody who painted by the GW you know, standard, they'd all be world-renowned painters. And it's not the case, right? Kim, sadly, I'm not, and still, I am not, and still got to spend 40 hours a week painting to try and get a bit better. Well, I mean, I don't think we should, you know, try to get better in that sense, like, you know, trying to deliver, like, I want to get better. Well, because define better. Like, what are the metrics that you're measuring against yourself to determine whether or not you are improving or getting better in every instance that you sit down and paint? Like, I sit down and paint right now, and by the end of it, I'm, you know, 0.5% better. Like, how, how do we determine that, right? It's just a progressive thing. It's It's... It's like working out. It's the only thing I can really think of that's, it's kind of like, it's like working out. You just make small gains all the time. And oh. it, yeah, and you know, it's, it's not like one thing is just gonna, I mean, mind you though, 
in exercise and weightlifting and stuff that, I mean, there are supplements and, you know, things that can speed that process up. But my point being is that, you know, it's, you you just got to go in and do the work every day, little by little, you know, if your goal is to lose weight, you're not going to lose it in one day. It's going to be over a year, two years. But if you go in every day, a little bit at a time, you're going to make progress. And your goal should be progress, just broadly. Because if you start setting yourself up for um, really hard to find, defined, I should say, um, metrics like that, you may set yourself up for disappointment. And you may become dissatisfied in the hobby. And I don't really recommend people do that because, you know, I'd rather see everybody just make baby step progress every day rather than, okay, today we're going to get a little bit better. We're going to get a little bit better. We're going to get a little better. You know what I mean? Like that, just do the work. Don't worry about getting better. It'll come with time, with practice. And of course, always, always, always breathe. I said breathe, not breed. Why not both? <laughs> breathe while breeding? I, I guess. Probably should, I otherwise you pass out. <laughs> yeah, you might pass out, I guess, right? Yeah. Is it too much to ask of both? <laughs> I have no answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as long as you do the thing, you'll get better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> not setting like time, put, not putting time into a factor. You think, okay, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be better at dry brushing. Yeah. Like maybe you won't. Maybe you will. Right. Exactly. And either way, you will. You will be better dry, dry brushing at some point. Yes. Yep. Well, yeah. That's kind of what I was trying to drive at. Just gotta do. Just gotta put in the work. Do it. Just do it. I'm thinking uh, thinned out, uh, slightly thinned out contrasts on uh, light metallics. What's the way to go? Contrast on thin metallics? Or thin Thin contrast on light metallic? Yep. Like a bright. Yeah, that'll work. Once I slap a gloss on this baby, it's going to have a result that I'm happy with. Well, as long as you're happy with it, I think it's a win. It's your model. You're the one who has to look at it. Unless, of course, you force the rest of us to do it. Hey? Huh? What'd you say? What what did you say? Oh, I was uh, interrupting you, effectively. Oh. Don't interrupt me. That's that's annoying. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry. (laughs) <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> Just don't fucking interrupt me, man. Just don't fucking do it. Uh, painting Harlequin. The best brushes are from Artis Opus and Kalinsky. Well, Kalinsky isn't like it's the type of sable, but I find the ones from Citadel totally lousy. They, you're you're going to be surprised that. Like the Artificer brush from Citadel, that's made by Windsor Newton. Windsor Newtons are the Rolls Royce of paintbrushes. Uh, but the truth is that you just have to experiment around to see what works for you. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's 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 personal preference. Everything about painting, in any format, be it canvas, you know, cars, miniatures, whatever. It's always personal preference. It's always how you like to work and putting forth your vision on the surface. 
that is entirely individual. I can't tell you the paints and brushes that are going to see your vision forward the way you see it in your head. You just, you know, you just got to find your way. Kim, I try and compare the latest models to the a few I painted a year before, every six months or so, just to see that I actually have progressed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Kim, Klonsky is a type of fur from red ferrets. Yeah, it's... Well, yeah, ferrets? Is it ferrets? I thought it was minks. Klonsky Thank sable you. is mink, isn't it? But ferrets are related to minks, aren't they? I think they're all related. Yeah, because you have ferrets, weasels, uh, martens, and mink. And they're all like the big weasel family kind of thing. Something like that. Yes, the weasel. <laughs> what? <laughs> Damn dirty weasels. A lot of them. Oh, that's you doing that. I thought it was Boop doing that voice. Oh, no, that, that's me. I am a man of many voices. <laughs> no shit. I was, I was, damn, that was impressive. Thinking it's me. Yeah, I, I was, I was, I was about to be impressed that it was Boop because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something, but then it, I, I realized that it probably would sound kind of mean, so I didn't say it. <laughs> I'm just a server alcoholic. I'm a big server. Uh... <laughs> a server alcoholic. Can't think of what the name is for like an actor who's really good at like different voices. Voice actor. Tom Hiddleston. I guess voice actor. I don't know. Impressionist? That. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't do impressions, I just do weird voices. Well, that's an impression, though. You have something in my brain. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could always relate it to something like, oh, no, that sounds like who so and so. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How does this uh, scar on his neck look? It looks cool. So, I had a question. You called him the Shazam Dragon. Kazam. Kazam. But yes. Oh, never mind. I thought you said Shazam. I was going to ask, are you basing it off of the superhero? Uh, no. Shazam. No. I was just going to, because you went red and like blue. There was a point where this thing looked like Iron Man. Uh. <laughs> when I basically laid the gold down and then started laying blocking in the red and the red was very clear and like it was giving me, you know, it was like the same luminosity as the gold. And yeah, it looked like Iron Man. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. So I made Iron Man, the dragon, the dragon Iron Man. I'm to train you Iron Man. Yeah, Exactly. Uh, Sophie, you can't rely on social media to judge your painting skill level. I bet if I posted one of my finished minis in a post and one to of, say, Chris's minis, I'll get the same number of likes for both getting advice and opinion from great peeps like Chris, and you'll know how to improve and how to, or how, and how better you'll get. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, like... <clears throat> unfortunately right now which is why like uh whenever i do like the instagram stuff on way of the brush like i don't really want to get into a deep dive on the paint job just you know kind of quick i like this and you know that kind of thing um mainly because there's a lot of that going on on facebook you know instagram twitter all that bullshit um post a picture of your miniature and then it's like basically a invitation for any schmuck to make a comment about your efforts when you're you weren't really looking for feedback you were just kind of like updating anybody who follows you as far as like what you're doing you know you're like right now if i post a picture of the head i'm just working on the head you know just showing you guys where i'm at but then somebody goes oh well you missed this spot you didn't you should have went with this color and you could have went with this gradient and blah 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 you know what i mean and most people don't want to do that what yeah you know what i mean like it, I, I wasn't looking for feedback i was just you know updating everybody i'm just you know sharing what i'm doing you know because maybe something i'm doing will it help inspire you to get your stuff done right so 
and I know there are many, many people out there who feel that way about a lot of the stuff. And, you know, it's, it's kind of unfortunate that this is the world we're in right now where anytime we share something, it's an invitation to somebody to criticize. And that's not really the point of the sharing, right? So, yeah. Like, I wasn't looking for feedback. I was just merely sharing what I was doing. It wasn't an invitation to, you know, tell me what I did or didn't do, you know? But anyway, I digress. You want to really digress? Um, do you want to really fucking digress? No, I was going to say Reddit's probably the worst place to post any mini Google drawings. Yeah. <laughs> it can be. I've posted, I've shared on uh, Reddit, and for the most part, people are, you know, pretty good. Uh, if anything, um, I actually don't get that many comments whenever I share on Reddit. Somebody I know posted their blood angels multiple times, and their blood angels are not the... I like painting mine the way they're painted, so that bright red. His are not. His is like brown red, and you've posted on there a few times, and most of the comments are, it's not the right red. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? And it's it's that kind of fucking dickery that is just, it's unwanted. I mean, like, can't we just share for the sake of sharing? Like, to just kind of, you know, hey, buds, like, this is what I'm doing right now. Like, have a look, you know? Oh, fuck, I was about to open up a case here. I just realized my paint's in here. God dang it. Oh, oh excuse me. I'm going to jump over to some citrine alchemy to pick out some of these edges on this scar but yeah it's you know it's a kind of unfortunate that you know people just as soon as you post something that's an invitation for somebody to be shitty and to say um unconstructive things and so yeah which is why i prefer that if somebody wants me to, you know, critique or comment or whatever, I prefer to, you know, them to send me an email with their pictures. And then plus two, that's also a, um, a an informal permission as well, so that I can, you know, show it on camera kind of thing. That way, you know, it's not like... I just randomly went to somebody's site, grabbed an image of their paint job, and then started, you know, talking shit about it or something like that, or, you know, being insulting or, you know, whatever, right? Although, normally, I don't, I'm not, I try not to be insulting. I, I don't think I've ever really been insulting. Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> please, please be the adult. Go blind. No, go blind. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Find me. Kim, it's all about what you're after. Some like really well-painted models and others just want some color on them for the table. It don't matter at all. It's just what makes you happy with your hobby time. Yes, 100%. Yep. Yeah. You, you are the only one that matters in this instance when you're painting your model. Are you happy? Then carry on. If you're not, well then examine. Self-examine and see why... Why am, am I not happy in my efforts and, you know, what's going on and, you know. I just did and I sold. <laughs> and go. now I'm happy. Skin not cohesive. Bring together with shade. Thinned out. It works. <laughs> 
I'm happy. Yeah. And there was much rejoicing? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I gotta watch those movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're great movies. Although I always feel like a giant nerd watching them. Especially when you start, you know, saying the lines along with the show. I try, I try not to do that because I always get annoyed when, you know, and I've given people shit about that one and I'll do it. And I'm like, fuck, I gotta yell at myself now because I'm doing it right now. But yeah, Holy Grail, Life of Brian, those I can comment along with them. I like watching uh, the Holy Grail every once in a while. Life of Brian's one of my favorites. I convinced my um, advanced uh, British literature class to uh, watch it. Oh, and really? Since the mess point. It's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. <laughs> Don't, man. You're going to make me laugh. Don't oh, fuck this <laughs> up. Come on. Trying to get this. Uh, those uh, those movies were them. my uh, bread and butter in middle school. Yeah. Oh yeah. And a friend, of me and a friend of mine, we used, we used to recite all of it for our entertainment. Um, in high school, I was not that familiar with the movies, and it was actually a girl I I used to be friends with. Uh, she make the fucking quotes all the time. I'm like, what are you quoting? So finally she told me about it and I was like, oh, okay. I checked it out. And then, yeah, got into it. So basically, yeah, a girl got me into Monty Python. <laughs> pretty much got into Monty Python the way I did. <laughs> <laughs> similar, similar, except I was trying to woo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, hmm, I guess I should watch it. She always talks. Yeah, yeah, she's always talking about it. it. She says it's hilarious. Give it a watch. And of course, like anybody who's new to Monty Python, the first time you watch it, you're like, what the fuck am I watching? But then the shit... It's, just, it's utter brilliance. Yeah, and then after a while, you're like, this is fucking brilliant. Like, this is crazy. It's how funny this is. Like, how have I never known about this? The important part is we all do our part in slaying uh, the grace and get all Cain and Arnie there too. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Can we have your liver? I'll say. Uh, First painting goes, my source of pride is my relationship. And how I use seven, no, not counting the good stuff, but I use seven different colors to my work stuff. Seven different colors, yeah. yeah. Um, where the hell am I? Greenleaf Terrain. Have you seen the Eldar looking stuff in the advent calendar? I have. I have, dude. I'm... I'm super pumped. I'd imagine that we're probably not going to get any solid rumors until around, I would guess, like Adepticon time. So what's that? End of March? I'd imagine that's when we're going to get, you know, reveals. That's a guess. I don't know. Kim, the important part is that we do our part in slaying the gray and get all the pain in our... <laughs> yeah. Sophie, I only post stuff on Instagram for three reason. Keep a pic of... Or for myself, let anyone who follows me see what I'm up to and have some laughs, especially with my face swap clips. Yeah, I've seen those. You and... Um, I, 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 <laughs> uh, what's his name? Chris. Yeah, I've seen some of those. I'm like, geez, Louise. Those are kind of creepy. <laughs> We're talking about Instagram, the painting and stuff. Well, I was talking Have about you it. ever given away a fully painted model and then instantly regretted it? No. 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 
Uh, the only thing I would regret. Well, not like not like regret like. If I didn't get all it. the pictures, it. video it. stuff like that, yeah. But no, like, for example, I mean, like some of the stuff I've sold recently, yeah, it's gone. It's like I don't give a shit. I don't even care, honestly, what that person does. If they sell it, if it gets smashed, they burn it. Whatever. I don't. I don't care. I'm not. There's not like a work you sent out, and you're like, I missed that. No, shit, no. I'm not that sentimental. Now, mind you, I am very precious about the stuff that people send me. For example, you know, like Dark Commission and Reziel and, you know, those pieces. I'll hang on to those till the day I die. Because I don't want to say I'm very sentimental about giving out stuff. Because I've given out a lot of, like, painted stuff and never thought twice about it. But there was... The Rogue Traders Bad News, like, mob that I had painted. That you wish you still had? Yes, and it's not because it was a Rogue Trader knob. It was probably because at that stage in my hobby, that was probably the best thing I ever painted. Right. Yeah, it was something you were proud of. It was a milestone moment for you. Yeah, and that's the only reason. I don't regret, like, because it was a Rogue Traders Bad News work. Whatever. I can get another one if I want. <laughs> right. It's just the milestone that was, like, I, I looked at that mini and I was like, this is, like, you know, the visible milestone that you hit. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Um, yeah. Like, some of my classic paint jobs that I've done, I wish I still had. Some of them I do. I don't know where the fuck they are, but uh, they're probably in rough shape, thrown in boxes and shit like that. But, um, yeah, as far as paint jobs that I did way, way, way back in the day. In fact, I had, I think I shared it on Discord when I was up north uh, for Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah, and I used... You had your old minis in a display y cabinet. Yeah. They were, it was three warp spiders I had painted like 20 some years ago. And they were there, and they were still in good condition. And I, I was kind of like, wow, like that's it's kind of amazing. Because, you know, um, it, it was, it, again, it was that, um, the coin from No Country from Old Men kind of moment. The journey that the, the models had taken to get back to that point. To get back to being in my presence. And to say hello. It's just interesting. Probably should have signed the bottom of the net worth. But whatever. <laughs> oh, signed the bottom of the models? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the owner, it was his models. Um, and he, he was very familiar with my efforts, so... He, he didn't I don't think he quite realized that they were my models did you tell him yeah oh yeah yeah well, I had a conversation and I painted these like you know 30 years yeah, before I painted these 30 years ago yeah painted these when you were just a baby he was a young guy you know, oh, he's a baby. yeah that's the fun part of being old But typically when I like sell or get rid of stuff it's like I'm not sentimental about it but it's just like that one mini because that was like a visible milestone yeah no I get it and yeah I mean yeah like for myself if um yeah if I could get my hands on some of my really old ones yeah I wish I could I, I do wish it Him. I did meet John Cleese in the Schiphol Airport. Schiphol? I'm going to assume that's a Norwegian word. Uh, in Holland. Oh, no. In Holland, apparently. Uh, we was standing around the luggage thing, and I was staring at him thinking, is that John Cleese? <laughs> and the guy started walking over to me, and he is, yes, I'm John Cleese. And then he walked away. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a very John Cleese kind of thing. Eh? <laughs> yes, you are correct. I am John Cleese. That's cool, though. 
Yeah, I'd probably harass the guy the entire time if I ever bumped into John Cleese. I'd probably end up with some sort of restraining order or something. <laughs> yes, I don't want this man totally anywhere near me. Communicate through references to his work. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure he's used to it. Or maybe not, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I think that man is used to most things. Most types of interactions. I, w I would like to think so. But who knows? Well, and personally, I don't like to assume, so... I try not to. I think I am mostly okay with that scar now on his neck. They also touched up the gold on his face as well. It's kind of cleared it up. Brought some highlights in. <laughs> Oi, geez, Louise. Star Do Valley Chris? Star Do Valley Chris. All right, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Star Do. Star Do? Am I reading that right? Star Do Valley Chris? Or is my dyslexia yeah. kicking in? No, I think that was right. <laughs> I, th I think my dyslexia is kicking in. Uh, where am I here? Greenleaf terrain. Rolling on the floor. I worked very hard on the War Machine Gobbler miniature. Was proud to gift it to you. Next time I saw you was on your desk and you had painted over my hours of work. I was pissed off at your for years. Still salty. You get no gifts from me now. Around 2014, son. What? The Nobbler? Just, what? Just paint over a gif? <laughs> I don't remember painting... The, you mean the, the little uh, Reinhold? I don't remember painting over that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah? I don't remember that. Oh, you remember. Oh, you remember. Oh, well, you do, do you? I'm sure it was the same goblin. <laughs> yeah. I'm not disagreeing with you, Adam, but <laughs> I I do recall that marijuana does affect the memory. And, yeah. Uh, Chris suffers um, from CRS. CRS? I'll let it sit in your mind for a little bit. Well, you, well that's it in your fucking mind. You need to make a phone call. What, like phone a friend? Yeah, you need to phone a friend. Tell what CRS means. Okay, I give up. I uh, can't remember shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Sophie, hopefully they won't cancel the next Adepticon. I would love to go, but it's a bit out of my price range at the moment. Yeah, well, I and Sophie, I think you're in the UK, right? So, um... It is a bit of a haul over here. Um, but, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, Stardew Valley, Chris. Yeah, it's a game I love. Stardew? Stardew Valley? Yeah, Stardew Valley. That, that's a game? Yeah. I, I, man, I'm out of touch, man. It's like, what do I know? I am really out of touch. All I do is I paint miniatures. That's all I do. All day, every day. Paint minis I just want to hang on to the tails hey Chris hey, hey. <laughs> yeah pretty much it's a good life uh yeah you know I, I can't complain I mean I mean I could but I'd sound really ungrateful <laughs> but I could complain but it'd make me look like a jerk and then everybody'd be like come on guy gets to plant miniatures all day long and he's fucking complaining like give me a break What a prick. Uh, Sophie. You can't remember the name, the name Butcher Chris, if you start saying names right, which is why I have never corrected you on my surname. Oh, Wiley? 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'm just, I just basically own it now, so. <laughs> I know. I know I've been saying that wrong. And I, and I, even though we're having this conversation now, I'll forget by the time next time we're talking. Yes, marijuana does affect the memory. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It looks like for the magazine, I'm looking at the picture, um, the Necron half is Necron, but the other half is just Imperium. There's a lot of Space Marines, but there's also some Sisters, and looks like Panic is still in there. And looks like Bobby G, and about half the stuff being uh, Space Marines, and then there's a few Sisters and uh, Admiral guys on there. I think I'm going to pull the trigger and take the points. Do it. Why not? It's a deal breaker for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kim, the plane is Aeronautic Imperialis. It is. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he's looking at Sophie's profile, right? Or Instagram. Uh, painting Harlequin did not know that there was still games in the setting. Thought after Battlefleet Gothic is all dead. Oof. Are you an old school gamer painting? Uh, painting Harlequin? Are you old school? Are you old balls? How far down did they go? <laughs> it's a bit personal. Well, I wasn't going there, but... Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a good I'll mess for a page, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Six inches where it counts. <laughs> <laughs> I have no excuse. <laughs> I know. You know what? Like adulting, like I don't know why it's it's frowned upon when people like grown ass people like in their thirties and forties still make dick and fart jokes. Like what's the point of adulting? Like it sucks. I d I don't see the appeal. Says the guy holding a dragon in his hands. I'm going to throw some highlights on those cracks up there. Um, painting Harlequin. I don't know. Is 28 old? Oh, that's still young, man. Jeez Louise. So you must have been a kid when you're hanging around Battlefleet Gothic players then. But I remember when I was a little boy, people used to play it at my local store. Yeah, so yeah. I used to play it. I, I still have my Eldar. I've got my Eldar. Corsairs, not the, not the Craft World. I always wanted to get the Craft World Eldar, but... Never did. Never got around to it. Don't ask why. I said don't ask. Yeah, nobody asks. Because they're your clients. You want us to ask. Sophie. Only me under 20 here. You're under 20, Sophie? Really? Good God. Why are you tuned in to me? Everybody over 18 is in mature street. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Street. Bad words are said on this stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just I'm trying to figure out like why somebody you know in Sophie's age range is hanging around listening to me. Good God! <laughs> anyway, let's grab a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet still on our palette. I actually don't know if Chris has his stream marked as 18 or 20. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I do. I have this set for mature audiences. Same with YouTube. Uh, I have YouTube set for mature. Because, you know. Because entertaining kids is lame. Corrupting all the children. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Little Jimmy's over there. He's saying, Fuck, I wonder where he learned that from, Chris. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? And that's the last thing I need is fucking parents showing up at my door. You know where my kid learned about sodomizing goats? <laughs> I was like, oh. You know where he learned this, Chris? Your stream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Why is your kid listening to me? 
Good God. You weren't in the AP Walsh category, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, to make sure that nobody catches my streams, like, do I have to sit in hot tubs with a bikini on or something like that? Like, <laughs> Can this please happen? Because it <laughs> other people. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you know, meh. Make this a thing. <laughs> How high do we got to get? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing is, is that um, my my neighbor, my friend, he's uh, he's gonna put in a hot tub. I think he's gonna do it in ground. So he's already got an in ground pool, um, and yeah, so he wants to do a hot tub. So you never know. Next year there might be pictures pictures with me in a hot tub. <laughs> That'll be on the OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, way of the Norse calendar. Yeah. Oh yeah. It'll be all it'll be all George Costanza like <laughs> just like in boxers with like the socks and then uh sock garters. Yeah. Every month has like one of those programmable speakers. <laughs> they got like careless whisper and then <laughs> a little bit of Marvin Gaye in the other. And, and don't diss Marvin Gaye. No. no. To go back to go back towards the hobby, you know how G W has his little mystery bag thing? Yeah. I'm thinking of going to a store this weekend and buy while I'm there for a speaker stand I'm buying one. And then that will be my new project for the new year. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Have a mystery bag. Yeah. Or at least the main project. Because we all know at some point I'll be like, ah, yes, shiny. Then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been there. I can't remember the last time I was ever a shiny model. Like, suffering really hard from the shiny model syndrome. Fair, you play Eldar, and when was the last time you... I mean, aside from the Banshees and the new James R, when was the last time you got a new fucking model? For my Eldar? Yeah, that's been a long time. Well, the Seer Council on Jet Bike. Because I bought a whole bunch of them. Yeah, those... Wait, those are painted, those guys. Yeah, and they're painted, yeah. I know, shocking. So I don't play Eldar, but I've painted my fair share. I used to paint for my stepbrother. Oh, that's cool. But now he's a bad boy and can paint himself. <laughs> yeah, I hope that this whole Eldar teases and stuff like that is is legit it's legit yeah because i'll it isn't just like you know throwing another model at you and going here you go now wait you know a couple more years well i hope it's Take not it yeah i hope it's not like this whole uh warhammer old world thing remember they said that like two years ago they were gonna to be fair when they announced that they said they will not have any substantial like updates for about three to four years well, that's lame. In their initial announcement, they said something like three to four years. They will not have anything substantial. And that was like a year ago. It's still lame. So they were straightforward with that one. Like, here, here's something we're working on. Oh, I'm sorry, GW fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking going to bat for we're GWs here. Them. Jesus. When was the last time you were accused of being a GW fanboy? I don't know. It's not, it's not a fanboy. It's one of the few times GW has been quite open <laughs> with the release schedule <laughs> for something. And that's why I remember it saying three or four years. It's because it's the first time I ever put like an ETA on something. Yeah. Um, where the hell? Picture, and it's like, when will it come? Next month? Next year? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kim. And it's inside the atmosphere game, not like BFG that is in space. Shit, I could be your dad. Oh, Sophie, she's 18. Oh, jeez. I got a son that's 18. Yeah, my son is, um, well, my daughter's, yeah, my daughter's 19. Well, my daughter's 19, and my son is 25. 
painting. Wait, your son's how old? 25. Shit, you're old enough to be my dad. I ha- how do you know I'm not your dad? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Daddy and Chris. <laughs> I'm going to go because I'm really white. <laughs> I, yeah, I was gonna say I, I that doesn't mean shit. I could have had an off day. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Hey, Dad, uh, where's that twenty-seven years of child support? <laughs> yeah, I'm in another country. Good luck collecting on that. Painting Harlequin. The aging process goes really fast all of a sudden. One minute you're 20 and the next you're almost 30. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can totally agree with that. Yeah, which is why I think I, you know, I cherish my toys and my my time. and Not that I'm afraid of getting old. I'm, I know everybody gets old. I'm not afraid of, of that shit. You only live once. Yeah, you only live once. Like, well, what if, like, you only live once but what I was sitting there and I was like but what if like you know you're seeing the light like when you die you're seeing the light or whatever and then a respawn time starts <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck no again yeah. <laughs> yeah see as a baby when you come out as a baby you initially remember everything from your past life before you respawn and then that's as why you crying. get out of the infant stage <laughs> that's why they come out crying yeah. Like, oh, fuck, no, again. Finally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're making jokes, but I mean, that that's, that could be real. There's there's no evidence either way that it's not true. And that's why when babies come out, they're crying because they're like, they saw the finish line of their dad's life. Yeah, exactly, right? They, they remember the last time they came through and they're like, oh, for fuck's sakes. I'm back again? No. Fuck. It's like, uh, do you remember um, yeah, Quantum Leap? when you die, the light you're seeing is the light in the hospital. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're respawning, right? It's it, it, The light you're seeing at the end of the tunnel is actually your view from when you're going through the birth canal. <laughs> right? And you pop up. And you pop back out, and you're like, fuck, I didn't even get a break. I didn't get a day off, nothing. You know, I got to go put... Pl- and when you start being able to speak is when you forget. Yeah, exactly. So not to uh, burst your bubble, but you don't see shit. It's just darkness. Well, spoiler. Yeah. Yeah, a little spoiler for you all. When you're dying, <laughs> it's uh, it's just darkness. It's nothing. <laughs> yeah, fucking way to kill the mood, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, having a joke here. Over here being a killjoy. Yeah, holy fuck. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just party. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard that I am. <laughs> but I don't I do not believe them. <laughs> I'm a peach. I'm a fucking brilliant up. Uh, uh that's the uh, expired can boom. Sophie, it cannot be, or it can be, a lot of laughs hanging out with older generation in the hobby. I play against the older age group within my own age in the hobby. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it, it helps. And, of course, you know, it's always interesting because, you know, a lot of people who, um, you know, have been in this hobby a long time, you know, they will often have stories of how things have changed and how things stay the same. And, you know, at least the ones who are mostly rational. There's a lot that are unrational irrational irrational and uh you know yeah some are just dinguses <laughs> painting harlequin i'm so scared of having kids my girlfriend leaves me with the topic not in a second uh, with not a second in peace i always think that i'm not ready for her. then i realize that i am soon 30 but apparently you can also survive somehow. <laughs> yeah, don't be afraid to have kids, man. Don't be afraid to have kids. Kids are good. Uh, from what I've been told, it's a learning experience. Well, sure. First one's for learning. The second one is, um, <laughs> you learn everything. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the second one is you're, you're, you're correcting the first one. Um, the first one's the trial run. Yeah, but um, I've always lived by that, I mean, you can raise two kids the same way 
you know, like discipline them the same way, you know, uh, treat them the same the entire way through. But one would become a doctor, the other would become a drug dealer. Like, that's just human nature. <laughs> Kim, yeah, you'll never be ready before it happens. No, never. It, it's It's pointless. And, you know, if you're planning on having more than one kid, don't wait. I mean, when your when your spouse is ready to go, I mean, you know, then go, right? But otherwise, yeah. There's never a good time to, you know, to have a kid, to, you know, and then weaning them off the bottle, getting them out of diapers, you know, all these, there's all these little milestones, apparently, and there's never a good time. You just got to do it, you know? It's like ripping band-aids. It's just, you got to do it, you know, make it happen, and yeah. yeah. And you'll, it's it's an enjoying, enjoyable experience making it happen. Well, sure, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, it says this, but he just doesn't remember waking up at like two in the morning. Yeah. Kids screaming. Well, a lot of times uh, when my kids were small, I was uh, working, and I worked a lot of nights way back when. So, oh, so you didn't have to deal with them. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, my wife de dealt with it, and you know. I was at work, you know, so, but yeah. Um, ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. Painting Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. I want to spend my money to minis. Yeah, I hear you. And yeah, before I had kids, yeah, I had a huge collection. I had all the games. I had all sorts of stuff all over the place because my paychecks just went to my hobby. Even though I was, you know, paying for a house and, you know, car and all this stuff you know and was with my girlfriend at the time who later became my wife um you know was just living life and enjoying it and then you know was getting all this encouragement to start a family and we were like yeah okay screw it we'll start a family and you know and then shortly after that it was like oh fuck i don't have money for this and that and i'm like fucking hell you know i got it because i got to keep the lights on got to keep the car running you know got all these things and it's like oh for fuck's sakes so yeah <laughs> real life you got to deal with real life first Hobby second. Sophie, you'll be just, or you'll be fine. Just wait till they start walking and talking. Well, as long as they're not bonkers like me. <laughs> um, I, pff, all kids are bonkers. It's all a trial. You know, it's not much you can do. Just try and raise them right. Show them right from wrong. Keep their bellies full. Keep clothes on their back. Keep a roof over their head. Yeah. It's not difficult. It's not rocket science. Hell, if it was rocket science, you know, having a kid would be very difficult, but it's not. It's very easy. Relatively. Mind you, I'm speaking from a male perspective, so. <laughs> Greenleaf Terrain. Fill her up, Chris says. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, yeah, when you're trying, oh yeah, that's a, that's a fun time. Because it's a, it's just an excuse to just <clears throat> get her done. Yeah, just get her done. You know, just you know, there she is doing dishes. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, she's doing laundry. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. You know, <laughs> she just come home from work. Bang, bang, bang. You know. So yeah, it's a good it's a good time. I mean, you know, it's a lot of fun. But then you know, just remember that the moments that you were having a lot of fun are counterbalanced by the moments where it's not quite as fun. And the part that I don't like to think about, but, and I don't want to scare anybody off from, you know, parenthood and such, but is when they are sick or they get injured and, you know, things of that nature. That's, that's always the terrifying thing. Oh shit. Or even when the kids, you know, hurt themselves. Like my daughter, she fell off the bed one time and even just thinking about it, sends me back to that moment and it horrifies me she was fine and she didn't you know she didn't end up you know dumb or anything like that like at least as far as i could tell but yeah um my son one time uh i was visiting with a friend and he his uncle owned a shop on this very busy street in town now the town we lived in was not very big it was only like seventy thousand people and my son ran out to this goddamn busy street thankfully it was between 
like uh, light changes. So there was a big break in the traffic, which, you know, it occurs, but it was just that timing and the little fucking bugger ran right out into the street and holy shit, like horrified. Thinking about, even thinking about that right now, I'm horrified. I actually want to go upstairs and kick his ass because, yeah, it's just, ugh, you know. Shake his cross. But, the good times, you were, there's way more than that. There's a hundred, like, 99 more times to that one time. So, you know, there's lots of good times. And those are worth it. Uh, Kim, my youngest son, that's 14 now, had colic, so it was a very little sleep that first year. Oof, yeah, my son was the same way. Uh, main reason we don't have three <laughs> anymore. <laughs> the joke. Nobody got awesome. <laughs> it was cut out in Discord, so I had no idea what you said. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, holy shit, we're already two hours in. I guess we can, I guess we can stop for now. I think we'll work on the base tomorrow. I think I'm mostly okay with where this guy's at. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I push the separation from the membrane and the gold on some of these areas? Just push the contrast a little darker in some of these areas? I'm thinking I should. I had a thought of using like a dark blue or purple to create deeper shadows in some of these areas. Like on camera, it looks pretty dark, but to the eye, it's not. Again, because there's gold under this red, so that reflects a lot of light. Uh, Sophie. Some of the funny things parents say, uh, though, like, stop that if you break your leg, don't come running to me. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you say those kind of horrible things, but no, no parent really means it. Well, no decent parent, I suppose. I'm sure there are parents out there who have said terrible things like that. But yeah. Painting Harlequin, uh, but that is just the problem if there was of me in it. My parents had a lot of trouble with me. I was an adrenaline junkie. I thought I knew everything better, even though I knew nothing. I was so irresponsible, so if it comes to it, I hope the other side comes through a bit more. <laughs> yeah, you'll. By the sounds of it, it sounds like your 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 um, your your spouse will have her hands full. <laughs> but it sounds like you'll have a fun kid. <laughs> and you know the old adage, you know, and your parents, I'm sure, have said it to all of you. I hope you have kids that are just like you. Yes, it's true, because both my kids are like me intellectually, and. They're pains in the ass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kim, yeah, push the shadows. I do love the high contrast. Yeah, I think I will. I think I'll use purple. Just for that slight uh, red variation in it. But I think, yeah, if, just a little bit. I think I'll thin it down and just push that contrast. I think I'll do it in just some of these spaces in here. Also, too, the way I laid the gold out in some of these spots. Because it's Tamaya gold that's used to reestablish some of these... Um, gold values and I don't really care for how I went about it again I was kind of in a rush when I was doing this so now that I'm you know I missed the deadline um, I can pretty much take my time with it and you know spend a little bit more lovingly time uh, Mikey Venges Venges Venge? Vengeance anyway god the new dragon are so cool yeah I like them I like them what is it Karazai Karazai Karazi, something like that is his name. The Scar. Anyway, he's a lot of fun. I like him. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to getting him done. He still does feel very Iron Man to me, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's not a deal breaker, but, you know. <laughs> Sophie, God, no, I'm not having any kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> second pronunciation lol yeah thanks uh vengeance 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 yeah sophie imagine another me lol nope <laughs> well uh sophie i mean um 
I don't know you very well, so I can't speak to whether or not uh, you're a pain in the ass or not, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you sound like you probably are. You're probably somebody, it sounds like you're somebody who likes to poke the bear. Poke as in like with a stick, not with, yeah, you get it. <clears throat> Anywho, I think we're going to stop there. Uh, what's tomorrow? Friday? So let's continue on with the dragon. Usually Fridays I've been taking a break from like whatever I was working on, but I think tomorrow we're going to continue on with the dragon. I'm having fun. I want to keep this momentum going. No, I have not given up on the pig gator. Um, I think I just want to get this dragon out of the way because he's mostly, mostly done. So it's really just kind of fine tuning um, shadows and highlights and such. So I think, yeah. Uh, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Boop and Mr. Sheep for joining me in the chat. Uh, for all my patrons out there, you guys can feel free to join me in these uh, painting sessions and such. So, you know, you can join in and have a conversation and, um, you know, do stuff. Uh, any last words of wisdom, Mr. Boop? Okay. Sheep? One does not halt its advance at the tip. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so basically you're saying that whenever you are playing the game just the tip, it never is just the game just the tip? Is that well, what you're saying? We all know that. Yeah, I know. It's never just the tip. It's never just the tip. No, I know. I've I've used that line so many times. I yeah, I, and then I go oop. And yeah, then, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yep. yeah. <laughs> Give her the full four inches. <laughs> <laughs> Strap yourself in, baby. You're getting four inches tonight. <laughs> the dwarf movements. <laughs> <laughs> that only works if she's into it, though. Like into uh, war gaming. My, my wife's not into it, so I gotta come up with cooler lines, which I, I can't, so yeah, I, I don't have sex. <laughs> I, I'm approaching 50, I'm, and I'm still a virgin. Anyway. <laughs> Sophie, I have a PhD in being a bratty pain in the ass. <laughs> I don't doubt that, Sophie. I... I you sound like you just like, oh, geez, Louise. Oh, no. Matt Yee. Raiden. Thank you for the raid. Matt Yee. Matty. Matty Yee. Matt Yee. Matty Yee. I slipped a groove there. <laughs> Dr. Rhino, thank you for the follow. Matt Yee. Thank you for the follow. And thank you for the raid. Um, awesome. Uh, you know what? Honestly, I, I forget to do the raid thing. And. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we'll change that. Because I was actually, Matt, uh, oh, jeez, please. Han, Hams, Hams fan. Thank you. Um, I often forget to do it. I usually just cut the stream off and, you know, jump off. And, yeah. I'm, I'm a bad streamer. I'm a bad streamer. I just paint. I concentrate on painting, you know? So, I don't know. I was working on this guy, this dragon. Doing this little glowy, glowiness in his neck today. And, Picking out some of the details. Just getting this guy finished. And yeah. Now I realize some of you might be new. Uh, well, I imagine probably a lot of you because you're just following now. But um, I'm probably going to give this away. It might be just my patrons. It might be to everybody. But I'm thinking, I'm leaning very, very heavily to just giving this away. I'm going to give this model away. So. Yeah. When? When it gets done. To who? Not 100% sure. But I think that's the plan. It's just going to give this away. Uh, mm, painters. <laughs> the dulcet tones. The dulcet tones. Fan of ham. <laughs> fan. You're a fan? Of, I'm a fan of ham. I loves me some ham. Painting uh, Harlequin, just slanesh vibes. It's okay. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, well, yeah, thankfully, they're, sh they're jumping into the stream now as opposed to earlier because, man, we were we were talking some shit earlier. <laughs> you know, um, we keep it pretty, pretty loose around here. Um, only one rule. It's kind of like the Discord. Don't be a dick. Um, but I'm not averse uh, to, you know, language or anything like that as I drop F-bombs all the time, so... I'm not, uh, I'm not precious about that shit. Uh, ooh, dragon. AOS dragon, yeah, this is Aegis Sigmar. This is, god damn it, what the hell's the name again, then, of this guy? Kazam. Kazam. Alakazam, that's right, it's Alakazam. Alakazam? Karazai, I think is how you pronounce it. What is it? Karazai? Karazai? Karazai, yes, the Scarred. Brazai? Brazai? <laughs> That's K A R A Z A I. It's a new title, man. God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hands fan. Hands fan. Is he a quick paint or does it drag on? No, get the fuck out. <laughs> oh, does it drag on? Oh, oh fuck. lord. Yeah. You know what? I should just end the stream right there. <laughs> well, I was reading it too. Yeah, well, I was reading it too literally. I was like, drag on. I was like, well, I mean, because I was like, is he talking about like the way I painted? Or, you know, I was, there's many ways to interpret that. So, yeah, I'm a little slow. Fuck off. Um, Scott Raider. Oh, Scott. Scott Raider. Hey, man. Nice looking dragon. Thank you. Yeah. We're having fun. We're having fun with this guy. Um, gonna get him done at some point. But yeah. Pretty straightforward. Matt Yee, what kind of paints do you have on that palette? Are they acrylics or oil? They are acrylics. Um, they are a combination of Citadel, Contrast, Turbodorks, Scale 75s, Golden High Flow. Um, yeah. Liquitex, because I use Liquitex um, Flow Aid for washes Pure and cadmium. such. What is that? And pure cadmium. Pure cadmium, yeah. I eat the pure cadmium, <laughs> as as any good artist does. Ham, uh, Ham's fan. Keeps it pretty loose, too. Potential collab. Big. I don't know what that emoji means. What does that emoji mean? Looks like somebody's it's bearded big. face. It's big? Oh, is that what the emoji means? Just means big? big. I don't big. know. It's emoji. It's big. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm, these, this streaming it's stuff big. is, you know... I just I just want to paint models and talk to people and have fun, you know? That's all I like doing. If I could function properly being smoked or drinked... I, I would, but I don't. So, I have to be sober when I do this. Otherwise, I'd be cooked out of my head. Be excused for good day drinking, anyway. Might have to, might have to be sober, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. But yeah, um, you know, he's pretty straightforward. I have not gotten the base done yet. The base has just been primed. And it's ready to go. Um, spoiler, the uh, base is going to be in some deep gray blues kind of thing. But yeah. Scott Radom. I'm suspicious of people over 40 who understand the emojis and other modern day bullshit like that. Yeah. I, I know some of the emojis, what they mean. Um, but otherwise, oh, jeez. Just, just chucking this guy around. He only knows because somebody explained it to him. <laughs> well, me? Yeah. Oh, definitely. I 100%. I have to ask because, yeah, I don't know shit. Yeah, I have no fucking clue. Yeah, I mean, you know, I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what's yeah. it? It's strange <laughs> and unusual. Remember when the pound sign was a number sign and not a hashtag? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, hashtag pound sign or pound sign hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My wife did that not too long ago. She was like, yeah, it was a uh, pound sign something. And I was like, yeah, you're old. Then I... <laughs> Then I slept on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Did he quite get to the doghouse? <laughs> no, I couldn't even make it to the doghouse. I was I was already gone. 
Oh man, Kim, I work very poorly if I'm not smoked out. Yes, yeah, and I know, I know, like there's plenty of people who like can start their day, you know, uh, hitting the pipe and what have you. I can't do that, man. Smoke a bowl before mm-hmm. work? Oof, nope, can't do it. I wouldn't say there was a day because I didn't smoke weed, but there were there was a time in my life where the uh, the first thing in the morning was a cup of coffee with whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. <laughs> That's how my day started for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I was probably closer to an alcoholic than, than a smoker, and then then, you know, yeah. But anyway, uh, Huck-a- hey looking so much better than GW Paint I don't know about that, but thank you. It's a compliment. Um, but yeah, right now, well, initially, it was it was feeling very Iron Man, early Iron Man. What Mark suit is that? Where it's predominantly gold. For Iron Man. Two? Is it two? Three? <laughs> Fuck. Don't guess. Just... <laughs> Mark Gold. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is it gold? Yeah. <laughs> Matt E. I don't know. Here, Matt E. Says, oh, now I can't see... I unsee Iron Man. Yeah, exactly, right? It's, I Man, I, I did it to myself. I played myself. I Because I sprayed this... Like, my intention was to just hit this with Retributor Gold Spray from C- uh, Citadel and just start this and then i went down this whole trail because i thought i had a can but i didn't so i basically laid gold it was like this gold initially was uh tamaya's gold uh on top of a gloss primer so yeah i was already hitting wrinkles early on in this project and yeah and when i initially laid out the red after the gold yeah it looked like iron man and i can't unsee iron man now that i've done this which has made me question my whole process, but I endeavor and press forward in this project. But yeah, he's fun though. But I did, I did want to do something fun for the scar. I wanted to like, you know, have something interesting going on. Like it's crackled and there's some sort of energy or, you know, maybe his surface is breaking up and he's got energy coming out of him. Who knows? I don't know. It's, it's a dragon. It's made up shit. Right. So Yeah. That was my thoughts. Because I knew I would definitely wanted to do some like OSL on the eyes. But yeah. You know. Something fun. Right? The other big mistake I did in this guy too was ass- fully assembling him. I should have done this guy in the sub-assemblies. Normally, I do sub-assemblies. But because I was trying to get it done for a particular um, time, I was, I said, screw it. And I put the whole thing together. And then, you know, yeah. But anyway. Enough bitching and whining and complaining. Scott Ray to Mark, uh, Iron Man Mark 1 was mostly gold. Mark 2 was the old red and gold. Uh, okay. Painting Harlequin. He can fly as well. <laughs> he is a dragoon. A dragon. Drag on. Uh, that's, uh, that's still vexing me. Chris was just trying to cover. He really likes Iron Man. He's not only going to be red and gold. He chose the same shade of blue as that, like, circle chest part thing Iron Man has. Yeah, and you know what? What also fucking skewed that was the goddamn Sigmar symbol in his damn chest. I was going to put that, make that as a glow. I was going to do that as OSL, and I was like, she oh. Did it. I she still could. Just scary. Just she just leaned into it. Huh? Yeah. What's that? I didn't hear it. She just leaned into it. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Just fucking right make him Iron Man. Yeah. Make that little glowy symbol in his chest glow. Yeah. So the Mark Eight armor has the one with the most gold in it. Mark Eight. Okay. Apparently. Okay. Well, this is this is um, Alakazam Mark, Mark Eight. Just pure gold. <laughs> Thank you, uh, She's a Gaming, for the follow. Thank you, She's a. She's a. She's a. Anyway. No. They get to find out that Chris's nickname is the name butcher. <laughs> Scott Raider, Mark V was the red armor with the with the shoulder pads from the eighties. Oh, the big round ones, the big round shoulder pads. Alrighty, kids. You know what? Let's let's try a raid. You're gonna go. I know some of you just came over from a raid with uh, Matt. But we are going to try and do a raid. I've never done a raid before. So you'll have to forgive me if I fuck this up. We're going to raid. 
How many are there of us? Uh, I'm showing 18 of us right now. All right, let's raid somebody. Give me a sec here. Sorry, I'm just moving my mic over. I'm digging into my Viking roots and we can go raid. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do it like a proper Viking raid. Yeah, let's do a Viking raid. Oh, Malev streaming? Yeah, okay, we're gonna raid Malev. Malev's cool. Malev's good peeps. I like the dude. And he's a good, really good painter. All right, so raid. I figure out Chris knows how to raid. Oh, fuck off, man. Ah, he already shows up. Oh, the beauty. Yeah, there's 11 people on his stream. Okay, yeah, we're, we're doing this. We're doing this. Boom, we're going. Okay, we all ready to raid? I don't, I don't even know fucking how we do this, but it just says start raid. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, do we do we have a, a battle cry? We don't have we don't have a monkey battle yeah. cry, do we? Oh, we should get one. We should make up one. Okay, any anybody Bring your shit. <laughs> any of the regular followers? Um feel free to think up of a battle battle call or a war cry. I could, but um You, you sound like you're gonna pass out. What? <laughs> Need some low battery. You sound like you're about to pass out. Probably. I'm in drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little drunk. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. All right. We're raiding. <laughs> All right. Let's raid. Hey, you. Let's fight. Are we doing it? Am I still alive? You have to launch it, I think. Did I launch it? Right now. Oh, it's got the little timer going. Oh, oh I think I fucked it up. Oh, there it is. Here we are. Old man figures out how to raid on Twitch. Yeah. Right now. Let's go right now. Fuck. Piss me off. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> are, we, are we in? I don't even know. Yeah. It's the thing. Yeah, I, got I got the raid. And the link changed to um, the raid thing. So, yeah. Anyway. There we go. Raid! Remember the old raid commercials? Am I still streaming? I don't even know if I'm still streaming. Yeah, I'm still streaming. Okay, I'm going to end my stream. Right?